Recently I did this story for the New York Times Sunday Review uh, where I wanted to kind of condense basic rules for buying seafood. And it's kind of vis-a-vis -vis Michael Pollan. Michael, you know, had done the famous haiku, uh, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. And that was a brilliant thing. It really had a huge effect on the way that a certain kind of consumer eats and goes to the supermarket. So my haiku is a lot clunkier because we have a very difficult, complicated system with the ocean. I mean, Michael does not have to deal with the fact that half of the food that his people eat is still wild. You know, half of what we eat from the ocean is still wild. So here's my haiku. Number one, eat American seafood. Why American? Well, it's not because I'm some sort of, you know, jingoistic jerk who says, you know, rah, rah, America. It's because the United States actually does fisheries management really well. Um, the, the U.S., along with four or five other countries, usually Norway, Iceland, Australia, these countries have figured out how to get the science right with management. And we should reward those countries by eating those foods um, from those countries. And of course, I'm not going to say, in my simple haiku, I'm not going to say, eat American or Australian or Icelandic. It's very just simple to say, eat American seafood. We're Americans, let's eat American seafood. Number two is a much broader variety of it than we currently do. So currently, the top three seafoods that Americans eat are shrimp, tuna, and salmon. Mostly imported, all, those three all mostly imported, and those represent 50% of what we eat. If we were to branch out away from those big three to embrace a much broader variety of species, I think that we could probably be more or less self-sufficient with our seafood here in the United States. But instead what's going on is we're not eating really great things like black cod that you might find at Nobu, for example, um, like um, a lot of pink salmon that is not usually on the menu. If we ate those things, um, that would be great, but instead what's happening to them is they are getting exported. You know, over three billion pounds of seafood exported every single year. So that's number two. Number three, mostly farmed filter feeders. This is probably the clunkiest part of my haiku, but a farm filter feeder is basically a mollusk, a clam, a mussel, an oyster. These creatures are tremendously good for the environment. The average mussel or clam filters many, many gallons of water per organism per day. They clean the water. Um, mussels are as high in omega-3s as most canned tuna. Um, they create great structure and habitat for other fish. Um, most importantly, you know, in this country we have no fish farming industry at all, or very little. We're 15th in the world behind Myanmar and Egypt. If we were to build a farmed seafood economy around mollusks, around mussels, clams, oysters, that would be great because the other thing is that when you think about farming of fish, when you farm a carnivorous fish like a salmon, you have to feed it fish. And even though they've gotten those feed conversion ratios way down in recent years, it's still a net loss many times when you create a salmon on the farm. Mollusks, mussels, clams, oysters are creating food for us. We don't have to feed them anything. And in return, they give us clean water, structure for habitat, um, and omega-3s. So it's a win-win-win situation. Um, so anyway, to, re to reprise, eat American seafood, a much broader variety of than we currently do, mostly farm filter feeders, uh, but I always said, you know, don't eat the whales. They're filter feeders, but don't eat the whales.